Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today, I need to do a brake bleed on my, well, kind of a brake flush even, on my 1984 Volkswagen Rabbit here behind me. I'm going autocrossing with it this coming weekend. Super exciting. At any rate, I need to bleed the brakes because I just redid my fitting tree, which I'll show in one second. I have a custom brake setup because I deleted the power assist on this car. I actually really like the result too. I think they're very nice brakes. And now I also have a brake bias adjuster as well. But I've had problems with those stack of fittings leaking because I didn't use, you know, sealant or tape or they just weren't tight enough. I'm not sure exactly what. I've already redone them once before with tape, but this time I redid them with sealant and made sure they were very tight so they shouldn't leak ever again. I took the fittings apart right after the master cylinder, so there's now definitely air in the system for all of the brake lines, so I need to do a bleed on all four corners to get that air out of the system. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today the way I do it. It's right here, starting at the master cylinder, coming over, down, down, is that fitting tree I was talking about. So I had all four brake lines off right here, and I had this whole set of fittings off the master cylinder. So the inside of this is pretty much a huge air pocket. In essence, the way I like to bleed brakes is pretty much just to fill up my master cylinder, open one brake line at a time, and then pump my brake pedal a bunch of times. Start with the furthest corner from the master cylinder in this case. So it's gonna go back passenger side, back driver's side, then front passenger side, front driver's side in order. And each time, all I do is I clip a hose onto my bleeder valve that goes up first and then down into my drain container. And then I open the valve and I come over here and pump the brakes. Pretty much just using the master cylinder's ability to move fluid to push fluid through the system. I don't use a fancy bleeder, nothing expensive, probably like a $1 piece of hose is all you need to do to follow along with me and some fresh brake fluid. So right now, my master cylinder reservoir is already full. It's all the way up to here. I just topped it off prior to starting to film. And I'm ready to start bleeding the back brakes. Mainly, I have the wheels off. And we're gonna start on this side right here. So I'm starting on my back passenger corner, which is farthest from the master cylinder. And then you can, I already have my hose on, but you can see here's your bleeder valve. Same as most bolts, righty tighty, lefty loosey. This one's loose, so I can show you. So that would be closed and that's open. And a little bit of fluid is coming out. You can even kind of see that. So my bleeder hose looks fancy, but it's not. This is a piece of rubber hose right here or maybe even just vacuum tubing. This is just a hose coupler and this is just a, like a nylon hose or something like that. You could use the rubber one the whole way. I just like having the see-through piece because I can see air bubbles in the hose. Now the important part of doing it this way by yourself, just to show I'm just draining into this tank, is that this clear section of hose, or just the hose in general, needs to ever so slightly go up before it goes down. So if it's all the way down, it's possible that you can get an air bubble that stops about here, and then when you let off the brake, it'll get sucked back into the brake system. So instead, you just gotta make sure that that brake hose goes up ever so slightly, and here even you can see the bubbles coming out of the system just from this being open. And when it goes up slightly, it makes sure that your fluid goes all the way up to this point, and there's no air returning into the system between brake pumps. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and hop in the car. The valve is open, and I'm pushing on the brake pedal, and you can tell if you have the valve open because your brake pedal will be completely spongy. Like right now, this thing is super soft, and it's taking basically no resistance to push it. Now there should be fluid coming out the other end. We do have to clear the whole system through in the sense that the air was at the beginning of it. So I'm gonna give it probably an excessive number of pumps. And the downside of this system is that I can't actually watch what's happening at that corner because I'm in here pumping the brake. But if you just give it an excessive number of pumps, which I don't consider a bad thing, brake fluid is cheap, flushing your system is never a bad thing, and now it's kind of leaking a bit, and that's because my bleeder valve was open a bit too much. They're really not, they're very simple mechanisms. So that's closed and that would act as closed, and right there is a little bit open. So you gotta be careful not to have it too open in a sense that when you're bleeding, it actually lets air in just because it's loose. All right, so I'm happy with that. We're gonna close that up. 
is pretty much closed, but then I like to use an actual socket to tighten and loosen it to reduce chance of stripping and or it just not being tight enough. And so for now, we're gonna call this corner good and we're gonna jump to the other corner. It's worth noting too that brake fluid is pretty corrosive. It's bad for paint, it's bad for humans. It's probably bad for dogs if you have one of those. Just be conscious that you're working with a substance that's not good for you. Pretty much like everything else on a car, wear gloves. So I'm gonna top off my master cylinder When you get to the front corners, you can actually see what you're doing with the hose. This is where it helped to have a, a helper if you did have one, even if you're using this, this pretty simple method here. They could tell you when it stops bubbling, which is pretty helpful. Okay, we're moving to the front. I just cracked this open with my wrench and then I gave it an extra little twist by hand. Same deal, hose is going up, we're looking good there. Master cylinder is still full. And I like the rubber piece because like, for instance, this bleeder valve is different for whatever reason on this particular caliper. The rubber accommodates different size bleeder valves, whereas this kind of tubing won't. What you'll notice is it kind of varies on the valve. Some of them are easier and or harder than others to get right as far as how open or how not open to have them. There we go. This one wanted to be a little bit more open. So there's that air. And you can see how when I take my foot off the pedal, it actually jumps backwards a bit. So that's why it's important to have that bend. So no air re-enters on the final bleed. And it's good practice when you're finishing to probably just lift this up a bit, see if anything else is coming out. No, close it, tighten it, good to go. Now the best way to check your work is to see how your brakes feel. Okay, so as you can see, this is how much play I have right now. So we didn't, we didn't get it on the first try. <laughs> Normally this brake pedal, when it's actually bled properly, will go to about here and stop firmly. Uh, and we have all this throw. So there's definitely air in the system. I'm gonna redo that same procedure again and see if we get a better result. So I just finished re-bleeding the back, just quick. I think I did five pumps on the brake, both sides. And now look at our results. That's pretty much what these brakes always feel like. They have about that much travel and then the rest is just how much pressure you apply. So I'm gonna go ahead and redo the fronts too, just for shits and giggles, but I think the back was really the problem here. Okay, here's my final result. Here's the brake pedal. And that feels great. It's very stiff. There's almost no unnecessary travel. It's just brake application, very firm, very nice. So, I mean, that's how you do it. You can see it's not too hard. You have to have some patience with it when you're doing it that way. It's not as easy as having the premium tool to do it with, but it definitely works. You just gotta keep your master cylinder full. You gotta have the right length of hose, and then you just gotta press your brake pedal when valves are open and work through it. And if it doesn't work the first time perfectly, just do it again. It doesn't take that long and all your wheels are already off, so you might as well. Now, if you actually race, all the time it's just required based on what league you're in to do regular brake flushes to make sure your brake fluid's up to spec. And if you don't race, I like to change my brake fluid every 30,000 miles. It's like coolant or like oil or anything else. It collects contaminants as it gets older and then that ends up wearing your seals and other parts as there gets to be more and more 
debris in your braking system. So a regular flush is a great idea. And what I just did is pretty much a flush and a bleed because the air was introduced so high up in the system, pretty much a brake flush. I ran new brake fluid all the way through all of the lines. Now a brake bleed technically is just a little bit smaller. You'd put only a couple pumps worth at each corner and that would generally push any air that's been collected in your calipers and clean any debris out of there. So it just kind of depends on what you're doing and what you need. You might do this for regular maintenance. You might do this for a performance upgrade. You might do this because you had to change out one of your brake components and you now have air in the system because of that, like me. But that's how you do it. It's not too hard. It's pretty satisfying because now I'm gonna have great brakes. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This is an Ollie how-to on how to do your brake bleed.